Fukuok has amazing beaches. We are on a Vietnamese island off the coast of Cambodia in the Gulf of Thailand. Now this island is known as one of the best places to vacation. It has great value. During the year you can get a five-star hotel for under 100 a night or you can support a small place like this family owned $10 a night for a room for two people with AC, hot water and the nicest loveliest hosts. Now this place is called the Phuket of Vietnam, the Bali of Vietnam, the Maldives of Vietnam. So I'm interested in checking out the beaches, but the best part is this is May, it's low season. So it's so brutally hot, I'm already sweating, but it also means we won't be around all of the crowds. So I can't wait to see what Phu Quoc is like during the low season. So there is grab here on the island and it is fantastic getting around to short distances. But if you wanna go longer like we do on the other side of the island, you really do need to rent a motorbike. Now we heard that motorbikes were 120 to 150. A lot of people quoted us 150, so we thought, let's just ask at our hotel because she's so nice. And uh, she said 150 as well, but then we said, can we get a better price? And she said, yeah, I think I can get it for you for 120. So we're at this place called South Wind Hotel to check out some bikes. You can also come here and just use a swimming pool if you want for only 50,000 a person, which is really good. So Alan is just checking out the bike. Um, I feel much better going through someone through my hotel. Just I feel like if something goes wrong, we have someone. And June here seems really nice, gave us his number. One thing that you may want to know though is nobody here in Vietnam seems to have WhatsApp. So thankfully, we got a SIM card yesterday. And so we were able to add Telegram, which is what June uses. But also, we noticed people used Viber. So I would say the easiest thing to do is just add Telegram and Viber before you come, along with WhatsApp just in case people use it. But I also noticed on signs here, you're not seeing that green WhatsApp sign. So just get all three apps, download them, make sure they're on your phone and you've set them up before you come here so that if you do need to get in contact with someone and you should always have the owner's phone number that um, you're okay. But I feel like, I feel like we're in a good spot. Like they seem to be very trustworthy so far. So we'll see. In Indonesia, people drive on the left-hand side of the road, so while he's very comfortable riding a motorbike, he has to constantly remember to go on the right side. For me, at least i am that's what I'm accustomed to, but yeah. I think the first couple days, this is a really good place to practice because there's not as much traffic. When we go to Saigon, you have to know which way to turn. Want all my tips, including what didn't make it into videos? Check out my Vietnam guide for what to see, eat, and do, plus crucial tips for renting a motorbike in Vietnam. We are at our halfway point. We're at Ong Lang Public Beach, and I wanted to share this spot for two reasons. One, it's beautiful, but two, it's really hard to get to. So yesterday we came here and needed help from two security guards, two snacks vendors, to actually find out how we got here because Google Maps takes you to basically the end of a road where there's no beach and it looks like you have to swim to the public beach, but that's because you have to walk through Ocean Bay if you take that route. Ocean Bay is this massive but beautiful resort. It's gorgeous and it's actually surprisingly affordable, but they're also expanding and so they are destroying this public road that comes down here. Maybe it will reappear, so they let you walk through. The other way you can do it if you would just want to come down directly is to look up Coco Beach Resort. And so we just did that. It takes you down straight to where you want to go. 
This part of the public beach is actually fantastic because there is a little place where we had some beer yesterday and then all the locals actually come out around four o'clock, five o'clock and are swimming here. Beer here I think was 30 and then we had this kind woman give us banh mi. Well, she sold us banh mi, but she did give us a lot of other things to try. And so we really love this beach. The cafe here where you buy the beer is called Windy Cafe. It was so windy when we came last night. And actually it's windy here right now. But we're still gonna enjoy it. It's windy, the water is warm. It's May, the water is so warm here. And this beach really is beautiful. and trying jackfruit for the first time. I can't believe this is my first time actually trying it, but our host of where we're staying, she's so, so nice. And she gave us some because, well, she had a giant jackfruit. If you've ever seen jackfruit, they're huge. I know that you use jackfruit as a vegan substitute for pulled pork, but I've never actually had it. Oh, wow, it's very fruity. It almost tastes like strawberry, orange, banana mixed together. Mmm! We are headed farther north. We're going to Ratch Vem, which I believe is called Starfish Beach, and hopefully we'll find some breakfast because we're both hungry and we'll be hungrier in half an hour. I think this has to be the windy time of year because it's super windy, but the sand feels so soft. Oh, this is nice sand. This is definitely a place you can tell where people come for the day, although it is low season right now, because it looks like what you can do is you get this little table and then they also have these hammocks. So families must come out here for the day, have lunch, just spend the whole day out here. Very typical of local tourism in just different places. And you need that afternoon nap after your meal and a few beer. All right, so we made it to Starfish Beach. The reason they call this Starfish Beach is you can find starfish on the beach, or at least they say that. Now, first impression, beautiful white sand. It's quite windy right now. And I think actually West Coast beaches are windier. East Coast beaches are not. East Coast beaches are actually, I think, prettier. So a few days ago, we went to Bai Sao and we went late in the day, so it was starting to get cloudy. However, you've got that Caribbean blue, gorgeous turquoise, the white sands. You've got the palm trees. It is fantastic. Now you can go and stay at a beach club if you want to, if you want to go walk all the way down to the end of the beach, or actually when you show up at the very beginning of the beach, um, there are a lot of national tourists and Asian tourists there. You can rent 100 for two beach loungers for the day. And then I think the beer was 30. And but that beach I think by Sao is probably the best beach in all of Fukuok and probably the one that makes everyone say, oh, it's like the Maldives, it's like the Bali. It's like, I would actually compare this island to Bali. It's got some good beaches, some other beaches, um, but this one, very, very nice. After this, hopefully, once the tourists go, we're going to look for some starfish and then also check out lunch. It's still windy here, but it's also really hot, really humid. So I am thankful of this breeze. I hope you can hear my mic. I wanted to talk to you about one thing and that's public versus private beaches in Vietnam. So Vietnam, a communist country, not surprisingly, all of the beaches for the public. They are free. There are no technically private beaches. On Phu Quoc though, it gets a little bit complicated. Number one, Bin Pearl, the biggest, most expensive resort, I think here in Phu Quoc is on the nicest beach on the island. And apparently you can't actually get down to the beach because they control all of the roads. So there's no access for you. I guess you could technically go if you took a boat and then just arrived on the beach, but I've heard security is crazy. So unless you're staying at Vimperl, you can't go there. For me, that's not really so cool. 
second, Long Beach, which is the beach that we're staying on. It's a very long beach. It stretches up most of the west side of the island. Now, it's filled with resorts. We are here during low season, so we haven't had any problem just throwing your stuff down on the beach, going into the water. Because it's so hot, we haven't really laid out on the beach because, well, I'd be a lobster if we did that. But I have heard people during high season, when the weather is less to burn you to a crisp, have tried to lay on the beach and resort security has told people, no, you can't be here. You've got to pay the 200, 300,000 or 300,000 dong to actually rent a chair. I think it's a really complicated situation because security guards are like the lower end paid staff and they're only trying to do their job, what they've been told. But it's wrong of the resorts to say to the security guards, you have to push these people, bully them off of the beach. The beach is for everyone. And so you might be having an argument with a security guard, but really the person you should be talking to is the manager of that resort because in Vietnam, all of the beaches are public. We're so bad, we forgot to look for starfish at Starfish Beach, but I do know they exist if you want to know about Starfish Beach and then also if there are starfish there. And then also um, Grand, there's like a Disney-like village. Fellow Canadians, Floor and Note, uh, they, posted a video from Phu Quoc a few weeks ago and it's great it's just they checked out things that we didn't have any plans to check out although that weird Venice looking village is like it's so weird I'm curious but also at the same time we don't have a lot of time All right, hot tip for you. When you are in Vietnam, make sure that you have a charger with you, a power bank. That's because you're gonna be using Google Translate a lot, although not everyone speaks fantastic English. They can usually read it pretty well. I like to avoid all misunderstandings by using Google Translate so that they can actually read it in Vietnamese. Now here, we had to use the Google Translate camera function for the menu because a lot of the names for things were in Vietnamese and we don't know all of the words for food yet. When you're ordering, make sure that you take pictures of the menu so that when you go up and pay, you can remember, oh yeah, it said it was this price, it said it was this price. Our first three meals here, the bill was wrong all three times. Maybe it was a mistake or who knows. But I had pictures of my on my phone of exactly what we had ordered and the price for each. And in all three cases, we didn't have a problem at all with them changing the bill for us. Good servers, usually after you order, especially if you order multiple things, will summarize the order at the end. But again, I just feel like here, Google Translate makes things very, very easy. Here, it was very easy. Um, one of the things that we did discuss over Google Translate was we got shrimp and we got squid, again, because it's fantastic here. And we wanted to order a quarter of a kilo and she said, do you mind getting 300 grams instead because that's how we sell it. No problem at all. It said that you order by the pound, and so we just agreed to what the price was up front, so it's not like we're gonna get the bill and be surprised by it. But overall, I think this is a really great place. It's quiet here, but it's out on the water. You can see locals playing cards or something, and this was a really good choice for us. Much better than the tourist restaurant, which is down there, which full of tourists, not as quiet. Who knows what the prices are there? All right, this ends the day of beaches in Phu Quoc. Now, this was a fantastic day. We've been driving all around the island. We rented a bike. Unlike in Vietnam on the mainland, on Phu Quoc, it's actually quite easy to rent a motorbike. Not the same kind of poops and you don't have to worry about getting pulled over by police. Now, places like this up here, you do wanna be a more experienced driver. I certainly wouldn't do it. But if you're used to driving motorbikes, this is a really great way to get around the island ending this now, but in the next video, you're going to see me. I'll be on the mainland in Saigon. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. 
You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.